Hi, I'm Patricia Rawlinson, and this is Embrace the Journey. It is a sweet little project where we do a really cool kind of faux finish background um, using some crazy techniques. And then I'm going to show you how to use stencils to make these roses. They're super simple. I've actually used stencils for the background details and for the lettering and everything. There's a pattern included in the design packet um, so that you could just paint it freehand if you wanted to. You don't have to. You can trace it and embase it and not use stencils. What I've also done is I've done a really cool technique here on the front where, if I can get you a good angle, I've pushed through um, some medium through a stencil and then done a distressing technique. And then we've added these embellishments which we have on our website as well. And so it makes it a wonderful multimedia project. The inside is perfect for, and it's sized to fit 8.5 by 11, so you can use it for any kinds of your just collections and um, photos, things like that. I think it'd be an awesome um, bride box as well, so um, I hope you enjoy the lesson. Oh, one more thing, I also show you how to use the um, Media Fluid Acrylics, which is a really neat um, lesson. So there's you've got faux finishes and crazy um, stencil techniques and roses, it's like a win-win-win all the way around. We've got a little box crazy here. We've got a couple of different combinations of things. We've got paper mache book boxes that when you open up, it has a nice little trim here. Um, very, very, very sturdy. So you could paint it to look like a real book. You could make it into a little keepsake, keepsake box. We've got also on the paper mache side of things, we've got a little travel case that you could make into a little fairy garden. You could make it have, you know, just memorabilia and all that kind of stuff as well. Okay, and then to follow, we have wood boxes that actually come unassembled and then you just glue them with these little notches. Comes with instructions. And this is a little jewelry box or a recipe box. It's sized to be either or. And then this is our keepsake case. This has got a, a little keyhole here that I'm gonna use a key, a stutchen thing for. And then you just glue this together and it is the size of, um, it's eight and a half by 11 on the inside. So you can put your, um, your cards and your letters and things like that so it all fits inside. You can also put feet on this, you can put handle on it, you could do all kinds of things. They're just blank canvases for embellishing. Okay, I have one coat of paint on and now I'm gonna take this wonderful little brocade stencil and I'm going to lay it across my piece here and line up to my edges. And I did go ahead and use just a little bit of um, wood paste to get my cracks and everything all cleaned up. So I'll put some on the palette, close it, reline it up. Okay, and then we're going to just scrape it across. Clean it up. It's going to make a lovely brocade raised pattern on this. I'm going to have to let it dry in between, so it's a good thing to do between chores or, you know, cooking or something like that. I know, like how many cook, right? Anyway. So I want to get you all the way through to lifting it off. Oops, and don't do that. scraped off and now we just lift to expose and then I'll go ahead and let it gape to dry and we're gonna let that dry and then you want to go ahead you could sand these little edges right here after see how they're sticking out you can sand those after you um, after it dries with the sanding disc okay we're gonna do a little bit of a faux finish back here and I have no idea how this is gonna work out so we're just gonna go with the seat of our pants here going to apply a coat of drying time extender and I want to do it a little bit generously because I want to make sure that I stay open normally I would make it just shiny but this time I'm going to do it kind of sloppy because I want the paint to move around okay then I want to apply a coat of our background color so that it, the colors will blend into this color Okay, now I'm going to slip slap a little bit of yellow, which is sand in DecoArt Americana. Just 
here and there. Go into a little bit of green. A little bit of our golden color. This golden color is uh, transparent yellow iron oxide. This is the media paints. A little bit of the uh, diarolide. I'm not sure how you say that. Yellow, that is a screaming color. So that's when we take our paper towel out and we say back it off. However, I'm going to keep adding my colors until I've got, and I'll walk in and out of some of these colors. So that'll change those mixing wet and wet really. Okay, and now I want to try taking a little bit of shimmer mist. Squirt it off. see if it'll run just a little bit. So I'm going to let it just go on its side and let the colors kind of run. Now what it's also doing, which is just awesome, is there's some water and it's it's reacting with the drying time extender. So I really like that. But now if I get in there right now, Then it makes, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make my own misted mixes. I've got here some kind of gray, brown, black color. Yeah, see what the water is doing? It's pitting the um, Okay, so I need another misted. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just slip slap through these colors. I'm not wanting it to be quite as wild and wacky as I got it going. But I love the technique, so what I'm going to do is blend these colors, not blend it like completely. But blend them mostly. And then I'm going to go in with that white again. Really raise it up just a little bit. And it's kind of shooting out a little bit stronger than I want. So I'm going to go ahead and diffuse it with some water. I've got a different bottle here. Okay, and now let's see if we can get some dripping going on with that. I'm letting that whole thing just kind of slide around. I'm going to go the other direction. So that's what that looks like there. Kind of wanting to get a watercolor paper effect. Okay, and it occurs to me that this might be a really good time to add some interference medium because it just will travel along in your medium and 
fade and make all kinds of techniques. Come on, little guy, want a little one? There we go. So you can take that and just kind of carry it through just a little bit, smear and smudge. I've got it running. I've just kept squirting and doing some stuff. I'm going to go in and use my crumpled up paper towel to just create a little bit more pattern and break up anything I don't like a lot of. And that's going to remove my color down to my base coat, which is going to give that the background effect. a little disaster area going on right here. I've got Deco Arts Chalky Paint in New Life and Treasure and I've mixed them both together and then I've added sand to one part and sand to the more sand to the other. So it's one-to-one -one mix, um, probably leaning heavy to the blue and then I got this beautiful beautiful look so I'll show you how I did it. I'm gonna take the dark color and we're going to do that lid okay, and it'd be helpful if I put this down you don't want it up on the, the rim so be careful of that and then you're going to do this light color on the bottom and I'll bring you back and show you how to do the, the, the tone on tone okay so now we're going to go into the we're going to use our brush with the light in it and we're going to just well, keep our fingers out of things and we're going to just dry brush over the top section, preserving some of that lovely dark. Okay, and then I'll kind of tone it back just alone. You can see what I've done over here. I've also taken my um, Shimmer Mister, and you want to be a little bit careful about spraying it because it kind of all over the place. But I can just take the lid off and dump a little bit out. And... <clears throat> Just put your brush in that and add a little bit of white on it too. And then on the bottom, that's what we're going to do is just go right over that with the little bit of sand and then go into the, the shimmer. Okay, I'm playing with hardware and things like that. So right now I've got some feet and I've got a, a suction and a key. And we made the hole big enough to fit this little short stubby key, and it can be glued in. That way it's not actually going to lock, but it goes through the holes of these escutcheons. So then I can just glue everything on it together, and then you've got a nice little handle. And then I also was playing around with different sets of keys. You could paint a little flower and put a bezel in there, and then just hang that from the front, and isn't that just lovely and romantic? Um, so I'm just kind of messing around. I've got a whole pile of things. We could put handles on the sides. Um, we've got metal butterflies and we've got little phrase metal doohickeys and little flat corners if you didn't want feet. Um, so there's just a billion different directions you could go with this, but it is so much fun to accessorize. Okay, as I am trying to make decisions, I've got Embrace the Journey. I've got this wonderful um, stencil with a, a clothing stand. I can't think of what that's called, mannequin. I think this would look fantastic with some peacocks on there. I've got all kinds of, like that travel. Um, and so I'm just trying to make decisions. And so I've got this wonderful 3-in-1 color tool to help me make decisions. And so what I can do is I can find my color and decide, okay, am I this green? I'm green and teal. So then I can look on here and I can see what color families will go um, with my color scheme and I really kind of want to lean towards the aqua green over here. I think that's probably more likely. So if I wanted to paint hydrangeas um, I could 
put some red hydrangeas. I could go into some blue hydrangeas and do everything in what they call an analgous um, color scheme. Or I could come over here and I could do purple and with gold accents. Okay, so this this takes me from where I'm at and it gives me some educated choices that I can make and it will show me what colors will work best um, together. And then on the back of these cards, it has, it has really cool, this is a very, very thorough um, thing. It shows you the, the main color and it shows you where it's at. This is the pure blue right here, or cerulean, cerulean blue. And then this is as you add white. And then this is as you add black. Okay, and then they've taken it over here and they've added grays and grayed it down and then you've got your tone samplings. But then they also give you the RGB numbers and they give you the CMYK numbers and then they give you the um, website names too. So if you, you can use this for any design. You can use it for your brochures, you can use it for your painting, you can use it for, um, for website design as well. So this is just a really awesome little tool. And the last thing, it's a 3-in-1 color tool, but I think they should call it more than 3-in-1 because it also has these wonderful um, value finders, which if you if you look at, let me get this over here, if, keep leaning on it, if you look at the color through the value finder, it the red one neutralizes the warm colors, and then this one neutralizes the cool colors. So this is a really not good example of, let me see if I can find something better. Take our little guy right there. So this will show you if your contrast in your shading and highlighting is good enough. So if we're looking at that red, it's going to show me if my um, contrast in my shading is enough. And I would say absolutely not. So um, I would assess it through this and then I would say, oh, let me go and beef that contrast up just a little bit. But excellent tool for when I need to make color choices and it fits in. It's got a little sleeve and it fits in your purse so you could take it with you when you're um, doing home decor projects and stuff. Okay, so I'm getting my box ready to go. I have this wonderful um, faux finish up here and I know that if I don't get it right that um, I'm going to have to redo it and I don't want to redo it because I really like it. So what I did is I took a copy of the top, just lay it on the copy machine, print it out. You could print out a couple pages. This is a laser copier, um, so I would recommend laser copiers because the finish on the paper is better. Anyway, so what I did is I went ahead and played with my stencils and things, and I didn't like this, and I didn't like this. Um, I used just some watercolor pencils to just scribble in where the things are, and I just used a real quick down and dirty um, just blobbed on some paint and stuff like that. So this is a nice way to do just a temporary layout. And now I have a map of my project. So that being said, I traced the basics for my, um, for my project and then traced the basics onto here because I need to know where my leaves go on my roses because the leaves are actually gonna get painted first. And then I also need to know where I'm going to put some of this honeycomb and some of this other stuff in the background. So it's a good idea to have those things in place first. Okay, so we're going to use a crescent brush and oh, this one is really kind of full of paint. Okay, and we're going to use this wonderful honeycomb stencil. And I'll just lay it down on there. I'm going to use the Media Titanium White. Scumble my brush in there. And I'm going to look for where my pattern is. And you want it to be maybe a little bit stronger where it's coming out from behind. Okay, that gives just ever so much. I think I actually want to switch to my other white. I want that to show a little bit stronger and that was just a little bit too soft. Let's see if I can line it back up mostly. Yeah, pretty much. The media paints, what makes them really cool is that they are transparent. What makes them not cool when you want it a little stronger is that they're transparent. Okay, yeah, see how that just leaves that little bit of interesting pattern? And I think we'll go up here. Now this is where my bike is going to go, so I want to be careful not to do too much in an area that's already going to have a lot of little lines going on. Now 
And this time I'm going to switch to my blue mixed with a little bit of my white. Okay, so isn't that just a fun technique? A little bit here, a little bit there. just hints of color. And I'll shade over there in the corner. And so I'm going to just lift my hands to soften and that will fade out. So it's like feathering it out. And then I don't want to do too much with this because I think you can really kind of overdo it. I'm not happy with this yet though. I want, I want white. I'm getting blue and I don't know why I'm getting blue. And good luck lining this back up. I had it, there we go, I had it tilted. All right, so. stippling. That's giving me a little bit more. Yeah. And I think let's get some going on over here in white. So then what we need is we need a great big um, angle shader. And we're going to get into this is cobalt turquoise. And let's just go ahead and just glaze down the corners just a little bit. this to become too like hey I'm a turquoise box so and actually why don't we mix in just a teeny bit man that was the wrong choice deepen things down I have to share, I, we have this triple layer and it's really hard to show you that there are three layers of these media paints in here. And what I love about this is it only takes up about 10 inches or so of your desktop. And I have all of the paints in the interference mediums and the antiquing mediums all on one little rack right here. And I just love going shopping for um, one of my colors. Okay, I'm using just a little bit of phthalo turquoise and the titanium white in the media just for a little bit more blue and I think I actually just mixed that color well it's, it's bluer here but it's coming it's reading that blue there it's pretty funny okay, I'm gonna get just a little bit of water and just come over here and just to deepen that corner just a little bit it up just a little. It's really amazing how little of these paints you actually need to do anything. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is take my leaf stencil, which gives you all these varieties of leaves, and I'm going to decide what direction I want things to go in and which leaves I want to use. Let's see. So I think I'm going to just put a little tip of this guy. I'm going to go into blue mist with a very, very stiff 
um, down brush. And I want this to be soft. I don't want my leaves to stick out like a sore thumb. So I'll just go ahead and I think I'll just go ahead and use the same one over here. Make sure you set it up underneath the rose, otherwise it'll look like it's just hanging out. Okay, kind of neat way to put your leaves on. And see how nice and faded that one is. So you can stipple these to make them stronger. And the neat thing is, is by using these tools, you can just design countless bouquets of flowers and roses. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I wanna deepen and shade. Okay, so I mixed just a little bit of my Thalo turquoise in with my green mist or blue green blue mist thank you okay and so then what we'll do is we'll just kind of tint and then while I've got that stencil in place I'll go into my mix of bleach sand and I'll just oops yeah that's not very light I'll go into white Just tone down one half of my leaf. Okay. And we could go into a crescent brush if we wanted to. And we could just go ahead and give just a little bit of like a shading. With that in place. Okay, and now I'll just repeat on the other leaves. Okay, now that I've got that done, I want to go ahead and mix just a little bit of this dark color. And I want to take a couple of little leaves, and I just want to make ghost leaves. Just sticking out here and there. Just so that you don't quite know where the story starts or Ends. So see how that just fills it in. Just change the directions. Super duper 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 easy to just create a bunch of awesome little leaves. Okay, so now I have a little foundation for my roses. Now I'm positioning my bike where I want it, and then I'll just scumble the color on there. And where things are a little bit harder to scumble because of all the detail, just stipple. See if I like my color. I think I'm gonna have to stipple to get my white to read really white. Yeah, the 
that's looking a little bit better. Okay, I like the idea of a little bit of a clock coming out of behind the roses. Just kind of makes me a little happy. And then I've got um, a little guy. Yeah, you definitely need to go ahead and stipple if you want it to be stronger on your light areas. Doo -doo -doo. Okay, I think, I think that's all the futzing I'm going to do. You can take all kinds of different stencils. I found one with a little um, dragonfly, you can put butterfly, um, all that kind of stuff, just for visual interest. Okay, now I'm going to take the different um, rose stencils that I have, and I'm going to make a soft mix of pink chiffon and terra coral, just to pink it up just a little bit. Actually, I did all back that down and go pink chiffon. And then you set your rose where you're going to want it and you can tilt it and all that kind of good stuff. And you just get it based. So the reason we came up with these um, rose stencils is because roses are one of those challenging things that people really struggle with, but everybody wants to paint. So we thought this would be a fantastic way make it easier. Okay, so now I'll switch to one of my larger stencils. So what we're going to end up with is we're going to end up with a rose just like this. But we're going to do it just through a couple layers of stencils and it happens really, really quickly. Okay, so I've got my rose and that one is a little bit big. But I think what we'll do is we'll just use portion of it. If you end up with um, too, too strong of a leaf line, you can just sand just a little bit. And I'll switch into a little bit of terra coral back over here. rose is anchoring, so it's a good idea to go ahead and let it be a little bit stronger in color. All right, and I'll repeat with the other roses. Okay, so with all the layers, what you're going to do is you're going to go in to the inside on the outer layers with your dark. That's a terra coral. And then, but this is an inner petal, and so, okay, so, <laughs> Same thing. Sorry for the confusion. My rose got away from me for just a moment. And you can deepen. Okay, so for the very deepest, I'm gonna get out the quinacridone burnt orange and just sneak that in to my little edges and corners. Okay, and I can take a little peek. Oops, slide it around so see how nice and deep that shading is. Get it lined back up. And now we'll go into white. Dust the edges. Don't be afraid of overlayering things. So these roses, I think, would be fantastic on little signs, um, 
just to embellish this is and that's on boxes you could do um, little roses on you know gift bags and things like that like there's no reason to be afraid of roses anymore okay so that's the first one okay so then we're going to go on to the next layer and this is just so much rinse and repeat i'm going to save that dirty brush with the um, darker color i don't want all of the pink to get muddy or dark so let's go ahead make sure i'm on the right thing here let's go ahead and shade this guy you have to admit that when you can shut your eyes and do your shading it is a brilliant So what you want to do when you're doing this is you want to keep, if this color is facing the, the middle, then you want to shade to the inside. If you had a petal out here, you would shade to the inside. And so you do it like it's a giant pinwheel. So that's how you tell which color to put where. And then we'll go with our white. The neat thing about these is you can still make them a painting moment because you can do a bunch of glazes and all kinds of stuff afterwards. Then we'll go into our deeper shading. And I had already put some of that other color in it. Peaky boo. Yeah, how easy is this? Okay, and so then we move on. Just slide your tape over and just twist and shout. And all your other ones are going to be done the same exact way. I think my air conditioning might have toasted my brush though. I have to switch. Make sure you get these ones um, lined up really well. If you if you don't catch the edge of that, you can leave little ghost white lines, and that's not very appealing. If you don't own a set of these crescent brushes, they make anything to do with stencils brilliant. So now this is one of those examples of this petal has rotated. It's on the top, so we're going to want to shade against the inside of the rose. So if you're always shading towards the center of the rose, that's your rule of thumb. And the only time that changes is when you have a flipped petal. And sometimes you get dust and you just have to wipe it away. Okay, I'll get that dark on there. If you want a softer rose, then just don't put any of the dark. And it's like it's coming alive in front of your face. Get that lined up just so. Got not twisted enough. can see what that little guy right there is doing. I think this one is facing this way. So in five easy steps you have roses. And there's no stress, which is wonderful. And all the petals are in the right spot. We 
make sure you don't put that um, burnt color out further than the shading that you um, did. And if you did, like I just did there, carry out the middle value. And there we have a beautiful little rose. Okay, so now I'm going to repeat over here. Okay, I realized that I want my um, I want my banner to be behind my roses, so that actually has to go on next. And I think, do I think that this rose can go behind? So just get this based. I think I need a little bit lighter that's just a little bit strong. Then we'll go in with the same color and we'll get our words done. So I just moved it so that the embrace word is over that banner. Sure you get it dark enough to show on your background. Okay, so we're going to repeat the same thing with the bigger one. And it's all the same steps. You're just doing that pinwheel. And do it a little bit bigger in this case. Okay, now is where we can take our short bright brush and a little bit of maybe both colors and get a little sticky here. And so this rose disappears behind this rose. So we'll just go ahead and glaze that down. changes its its tone quite a bit and then this disappears behind here don't go on your banner so things that go behind get to be glazed just a little bit darker and that kind of sinks things in our rose down here should more than likely go ahead and be just kind of glazed deeper down at the base Give it like a one side accent. And then you can take your whites and you can go boost them where you want to if you weren't able to get them as bright as you want. So like for example, on this little guy right here, maybe I want his whites to be much crispier right there. And along the edge. In many ways, having these um, stencils is almost like just tracing your pattern on for you, for you to embellish and freehand a little bit. So just go and just increase this guy that's doing all the front starring. Okay, now we're going to add some drop shading to, I'm going to go on the right sides of the letters. And we'll go ahead and on underneath. And then we'll need a little bit of our cobalt turquoise. And we'll do drop shading on these letters. And we'll lighten up these letters just a little bit so that they actually contrast with drop shading. 
give them just a little bit of kapawi. Okay, we've got a little bit of isolated color going on here, so we're going to use some dry rubbing and we will spread the pink love around. So what I want to do is just get some of the terra coral in my brush and let's let's connect some dots here. Now we'll go in with our terra coral and thin it with water using a half inch white wonder rake. And then let's spatter in almost like a baby's breath moment in pink. And then we'll go into the um, cobalt turquoise and do the same thing over there. And then we'll go into white. Always test on your palette, and if you start getting these little streaks, thin it down just a little bit more. Okay, and then make sure that you wait for your spatters to dry. It's really easy to smear them. Okay, I'm wanting my bike to show up just a little bit more. I'm going to try a trick. I don't know if it's going to work. I'm going to take just a little bit of my um, cobalt turquoise and the green gold. And maybe just a little bit of the turquoise. They have a turquoise. I'm going to wipe that out of my brush. And I'm just going to go back here behind the bike. And deepen. And what I'm probably going to have to do is I'm probably going to have to um, re-stencil on my bike or just highlight it with so I could just take my liner brush and my white and I could just go right back it if I wanted to and that's just a little bit stronger so if you're not too if you're not dark back there give it a little bit of deepening 